Welcome everyone. We have studied in the previous videos two applications for ferrite materials. One application is isolators and the other application is phase shifters. Now we are going to study a third application which is ferrite circulators. And effectively, circulators is one of the most important applications for ferrite materials. Generally speaking, the circulator is a three-board network, and it is non-reciprocal device. It is based on the idea that if the bar is instant from board one, it is transmitted to board two, and it goes out from board two. And there is no power is transmitted through board three. On the other hand. If the bar is incident from board 2, it is transmitted to board 3, and there is no bar is transmitted to board 1. Finally, if the incident bar is incident from board 3, then the bar is transmitted to board 1, and there is no bar is transmitted to board 2. If we are going to represent this behavior in S parameters, we can represent the scattering matrix of an ideal circulator as follows. If the excitation is from board 1, there is no reflection at board 1. So S11 is 0. And all the power is transmitted from board 1 to board 2. So S21 is unique. And there is no power is transmitted to board 3. So S31 is 0. Now, if the incident power is from board 2, the reflection at board 2 is 0. So S22 is 0. And all the power is transmitted from board 2 to board 3. So S32 is 1. And there is no power is transmitted from board 2 to board 1. So S12 is 0. Finally, if the incident power is incident from board 3, there is no reflection at board 3. So S33 is 0. And the power is transmitted from board 3 to board 1. So S13 is unity. And there is no power is transmitted from board 3 to board 2. So S23 is 0. This configuration is very important in transmitters and receivers uh, in communication systems, for example, in radar system. In this case, the antenna is connected, for example, at the board 2, and the transmitted is connected at board 1, and the receiver is connected at board 3. So, the transmitted board is going from board 1 to the antenna, which radiates the power. Then, the reflected back signal, or the received signal, is received by the antenna, and it is entering board 2, or incident in board 2, so it is transmitted to board 3, to the receiver side. So, by using the circulator, we have separated the transmitter from the receiver while we are connecting both of them to the same antenna structure. So the circulator plays a very important role in uh, transceiver systems and radar systems. Uh, this circulator behaves such that the bar is instant from bar, bar, board 1 to 2 and from 2 to 3 and from 3 to 1. We can have another circulator with an opposite direction. So we can also have a circulator such that the bar is incident from board 1 to board 3, and from board 3 to board 2, and from board 2 to board 1. In this case, the corresponding scattering matrix, it would be as follows. At board 1, S11 is 0, because it is matched at board 1. And the bar is transmitted from 1 to 3. So S31 is unity. 
and there is no power is transmitted to port 2 so s21 is zero if the power is incident from port 2 s22 is zero because it is matched so s22 is zero and the power is transmitted from port 2 to port 1 so s12 is unity and there is no power is transmitted from port 2 to port 3 so s32 is zero finally if the power is incident from port 3 there is no reflection at port 3 so s33 is zero the power is transmitted from port 3 to port 2 so s23 is, is unity and there is no power is transmitted from port 3 to port 1 so s13 is zero in this case for example we can put the antenna at port 1 and we can put the transmitter at port 2 and the receiver at port 3 so the power of the transmitted signal is transferred from port 2 to port 1 to the antenna to be radiated on the other hand the reflected signal or the received signal it would be received at port 1 enter at port 1 to go port 3 to the receiver side uh, for the right circulator to interchange the direction of the rotation it can be obtained by interchanging the DC biasing magnetic field so as we will see the configuration of uh, the right uh, circulator looks like this we have uh, a ferrite resonator and this right resonator is biased by DC magnetic field from the top to the bottom so if you are going the top is the north and the bottom is the south we will have some orientation if we interchange the biasing magnetic field such as that the top is south and the bottom is the north we will find the opposite orientation so uh, assume that this is orientation 2 and this is orientation 1 so we can interchange between uh, uh, orientation 1 and orientation 2 by switching the biasing magnetic field uh, if you are using permanent magnet so the circulator is usually in one direction because we are not going to interchange physically uh, the orientation of the magnet but we can use electromagnet by using uh, a coil and by using uh, uh, an electromagnet we can use the electromagnet to make the biasing in direction 1 or the biasing in direction 2 and in the case of electromagnet uh, we can use the same principle of uh, the remnant uh, isolator such that we are going to increase the current in the coil to increase the magnetic field or the DC biasing magnetic field to a certain uh, to saturation value and then by letting the current to return to zero there is still remnant magnetism in the ferrite medium and this remnant magnetism will introduce uh, the circulator in one direction now by interchanging the direction of the current we are interchanging the direction of the magnetic field we are interchanging the direction of the rotation of the circulator so assume that we are using uh, direction one or the uh, electric current one to obtain direction one so in direction one the power from port one it will go to port two and it will be isolated from port three on the other hand if we are using direction two the power at port one it go to it goes to port three and it is isolated from port two so effectively by using the concept of electromagnet and using latching or remnant mode and switching from one mode to another we can use the circulator as a switch so we can switch the power from port 1 to port 2 or from port 1 to port 3 by using which direction of the magnetic field so if an electromagnet is used the circulator can operate in a latching remnant mode as a single pole double through switch so we have certain input at port 1 it can be switched to port 3 in one direction or to port 2 in another direction.
So one of the application or another application to the circulators, especially by using electromagnet biasing, it can be used as a microwave switch. Uh, another application for the circulator, we can use it also as an isolator. Assume that we have a circulator, looks like this, uh, with this orientation, and we have connected the port 3 with a matched load. So, in this case, the incident bar from port 1 will go to the bar uh, to port 2 without any losses, because S21 is unity, so the bar from port 1 to port 2, it would be transmitted from port 1 to port 2. Now, if the bar is incident from port 2, it will go to port 3. And if port 3 is terminated with a matched load, so the bar will be dissipated in this matched load. And in this case, all the power from port 2 will be dissipated in the matched load, and no power will go to the port 1. So in this case, the bar from port 2 is isolated from port 1. Okay, so the bar is transferred from port 1 to port 2, but it is not transferred from port 2 to port 1. So this is the basic idea of uh, microwave isolator. And effectively, uh, in practice, we usually use circulator to make an isolator instead of uh, the resonance isolator or the other types of isolators which we have discussed. We use a circulator with a matched load in one of its terminals as a simple isolator. Here we have uh, a configuration of uh, ferrite uh, circulator. Uh, as I said, it consists of a ferrite disk. This ferrite disk is connected to three uh, uh, print or step lines. And uh, this ferrite uh, circular disk uh, is biased by a uh, DC magnetic field. Uh, the DC magnetic field is two permanent magnetic field, one at the bottom and one at the top. And as I said, according to uh, the polarity of such magnetic biasing magnetic field, we can determine uh, the direction of the rotation of the circuit. Now, to study uh, the properties of mismatched circulator, which is non-ideal, in mismatched circulator, the reflection coefficients at uh, the input ports are not zero. So, in general, S11, it would be gamma, uh, S22, it would be gamma, S33, it would be gamma, and assuming that this circulator is symmetric for all three boards, so the reflection coefficient for all the three boards would be the same, and then a sample of the power would be transmitted from board 1 to board 2 with an amount equals alpha. So S21 is alpha. And a sample of the power is transmitted from board 1 to board 3 with an amount beta. Uh, for example, if the orientation of this circulator looks like uh, shown here, so for ideal circulator, the value of gamma it would be 0, the value of alpha it would be 1, and the value of beta, it would be zero. Now, if I'm going from board two, the reflection at board two, or S22 at board two, it would be gamma. The transmission from board two to board three, it would be similar to the transmission from board one to board two, so it would be alpha. So S32 is alpha. And the transmission from board two to board one, it would be similar to the transmission from board one to board three, so it would be beta. Finally, if the bar is transmitted from board 3, or incident from board 3, uh, the reflection at board 3 it would be gamma. The transmitted signal from board 3 to board 1, S31, it would be alpha. And the transmitted signal from board 3 to board 2, it would be beta. Now, assuming that this circulator, even it is mismatched, it is lossless. So, assuming that it is lossless, and we know that for lossless S parameters, if we take the magnitude squared of one column or of one row, and take the summation of this magnitude square, it should be unity. So, if you are talking about the magnitude of the first column, 
would be gamma squared plus here the magnitude of the first law gamma squared plus beta squared plus alpha squared is unity so the magnitude of the first law uh, magnitude squared gamma squared plus beta squared plus alpha squared is unity another property for uh, lossless S parameters is that if we are taking uh, one row or one column with the conjugate of the other column one column with the conjugate of the other column it should be zero so gamma multiplied by beta conjugate plus alpha multiplied by gamma conjugate plus beta multiplied by alpha conjugate it should be zero so these are the two conditions such that this microwave device is uh, lossless so to satisfy uh, lossless properties for such mismatched circulator or non-ideal circulator it is required to satisfy these two conditions now if you are assuming that the circulator is matched it means that the value of gamma is zero so for matched circulator gamma it would be zero if we are applying gamma to be zero in uh, these two equations we can find out it would be beta squared plus alpha squared is unity and here gamma is zero so beta multiplied by alpha conjugate is zero so we have two relations between beta and alpha if beta multiplied by alpha conjugate is zero this can be obtained either by alpha is zero or beta is zero so if alpha is zero then beta squared plus zero is unity so beta it would be unity if beta uh, is zero so in this case zero squared plus alpha squared is unit so if beta squared alpha it would be unit so we have two conditions if uh, this uh, lossless circulator is matching one condition is that alpha is zero and beta is unity in this case we have zero zero one which is actually we are rotating in uh, clockwise uh, if we have beta equals zero and alpha is unity so we have zero one zero zero one zero it means that zero one okay sorry if beta equals zero so it would be zero one zero so the power from port one it would be to port two it would be clockwise if alpha is zero so beta is unity so it would be zero zero one so the power from port one it would be to port three so in this case it would be counterclockwise so effectively the conditions on alpha and beta if alpha is zero and beta is unity this is the rotation uh, counterclockwise if beta is zero and alpha is unity this is the rotation uh, in clockwise so uh, this describes the ideal circulator with two possible circularity states and observe that the condition depends only on the lossless and matching device now let us return back what will be the situation if we have a small mismatch so if we have a small mismatch if gamma is very small so if gamma is very small and we are going to the case we have gamma alpha and beta in this case assume that we have alpha is close to unity and beta is close to zero because as we said here we have gamma is nearly zero is very small so beta multiplied by alpha is nearly zero so one of them is very small so we are going to assume that alpha is close to unity but beta is very small so now we have two small quantities the value of gamma and the value of beta and one large quantity is alpha this means that the bar incident from port one has very little part is reflected to port one and most of this power is transferred to port two 
and very little part is transferred to port 3. This is actually the ideal situation for a circulator. I don't have an ideal circulator. I don't have completely uh, matched with circulator. I don't have a circulator with uh, ideal isolation between port 1 and port 3. So effectively, I have a little bit of power reflected at port 1 and a little bit power transmitted to port 3. But the main power is transmitted from port 1 to port 2. In a similar way, if the excitation is from port 2, I have a little bit power reflected from port 2, which is gamma, and most of the power is transmitted to port 3, alpha, and little bit power is transmitted to port 1, beta. So, in this case, we have gamma is very small value, and beta is very small value. So, in general, we can say that if we see the multiplication of gamma multiplied by beta, the small value multiplied by small So, gamma is a small value and beta is a small value. So, the multiplication of a small value by a small value is very small value and it is nearly zero. So, if we see the multiplication beta multiplied by gamma in any situation, we are going to neglect it. Now, let us return back to the two equations for uh, the lossless case uh, gamma squared plus beta squared plus alpha squared equal 1 and gamma beta conjugate plus alpha gamma conjugate plus beta alpha conjugate equal 0 as we said the value of beta multiplied by gamma is very small so we are going to neglect this value which is nearly 0 so the remaining part is alpha multiplied by gamma plus beta multiplied by alpha is nearly zero. So we can take alpha as a common factor. From this, we can expect that the magnitude of gamma is nearly the magnitude of beta. The magnitude of gamma is nearly the magnitude of beta. And from this relation, we can say that, okay, alpha squared as a magnitude equal one minus gamma squared minus beta squared. And because the magnitude of gamma is nearly the magnitude of beta, so we can simply say that the magnitude of alpha squared is nearly 1 minus twice the magnitude of beta squared, or 1 minus twice the magnitude of gamma squared. Alright? So, from this, we can arrange the S parameters here. Instead of using different notations for gamma and beta, we are going to say as a magnitude, as a magnitude, the S parameters, it would be gamma, and instead of alpha, it would be alpha 1 minus 2 gamma squared, minus 1 minus 2 gamma squared. Sorry, this is alpha squared, so the square root of alpha would be the square root of 1 minus 2 gamma squared, which is approximately 1 minus gamma squared. So, the value of alpha, it would be 1 minus gamma squared, and the value of beta is nearly gamma. So, the S parameters for mismatched circulator, it can be obtained nearly as gamma, 1 minus gamma squared, gamma, 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 1 minus gamma squared, 1 minus gamma squared, gamma, gamma. And for ideal case, the value of gamma is 0, so it would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, in the following video, we are going to study the field analysis of a uh, strip line junction uh, circulator and see what is the mechanism of uh, the electromagnetic wave inside uh, the ferrite circulator and how such circulator it can operate in uh, this function. Okay, see you in the next video.